Hello, welcome to this short demonstration of Apex Generative Design being used to redesign this simple bracket. So this um, standard part, it weighs about 1.75 kilograms um, and we're going to use the Apex Generative Design to come up with an alternative concept for a 3D printing. So what I'm going to do is just run a quick baseline analysis on this. So I'm going to go and throw a mesh on it. I'm going to use um, sort of four millimeter elements. And what I'm going to do, because it's a, a pressure load on the top, I'm going to go into loads and constraints. I'm going to put pressure load on that top surface. Um, and this will be reacted, uh, basically, uh, oversimplification, I agree, but uh, the bolt face is there. So I'm going to put a, a constraint on those bolt faces. And then I'm also going to constrain this edge here um, for the sort of heel and toe effect generated by the load. Uh, I'm going to apply a material to it. I've actually got a macro um, that I use to generate the materials. So this just puts um, three simple materials into my model. And then I can go in here and I can use the steel and assign it to that part. I'm then ready to run my simulation. So I have a static scenario by default. So I have to associate a model rep for the analysis and then choose which loads and boundary conditions I'm going to use. And then I can come in here and I can run the simulation. And this will take a minute or so to run through and come back with some results. So the solver inside Apex is, is based upon Nastran, but uh, broken down to work in, in a modular fashion within the Apex environment. So that's completed. I can go into post-processing. And I have my deformed shape and I can come in here and I can plot. So my von Mises stress is 175 megapascals. And I can look at my maximum displacements, which are uh, 0.07 millimeters. So what I want to do is uh, retain some basic features of this part um, and come up with a, a topology optimized concept that I can 3D print. So i close that. And I have already imported the model into the Apex Generative. So you can see it, it's basically the same Apex GUI. Um, I'm going to import the materials again. And I'm going to assign steel to that one. And then what I want to do is um, create myself a, a design environment. So I basically want to defeature this back to a volume that we can use to do the topology optimization. So I use do that using firstly the defeature capability. So I'm going to do it by, by identifying features. So I pick on the part and hit the middle mouse button. And I go to 3D fillets, and you can see it's color coded the, the, the different sizes of 3D fillets. And I can pick on the, the color bar here, the middle mouse, and it will delete all of the ones in that in that uh, color range. And again, on the corners. What I want to do is basically create a, a cuboid from which we can do um, do the optimization. But I do need to preserve access to the to the uh, fixings that will sit there. So I can do this with a push-pull capability. So I check the button for up to, and then I can grab this face, and I can pull it up to snap to that surface there. And you can see it's, it's filled in, removed that diagonal rib, but preserved my, my access holes. So my next step is to tell generative design what parts of the model it can't change, uh, it can't eat away. And I do this by specifying a non-design region. So I'm going to do it using offsets. And I'm going to 
use an offset of three millimeters. So I pick my part and I pick a face to offset. And you can see it's partitioned the model already uh, and the, the, the kind of gray color um, is showing me areas that will not be considered for design. And I do it with the back face as well. Um, the bolt faces will automatically be included by virtue of applying a boundary condition to them, which is my next step. So I'm going to create my displacement constraints just as I did before. So I choose the surfaces and I'm going to pick that face and I'm going to pick that face. And then I also come and I pick that bottom edge. And then lastly, I'm going to add my pressure load. Like that. Now I'm almost ready to run this and you'll note that I don't have any way of creating a mesh. The mesh is done uh, internally, um, it, it's hidden from me uh, and the mesh controls are, are dealt with automatically to refine the mesh as we go along which makes this totally different to any other topology optimization code that you may be familiar with. They start with an, with an outline mesh and either erode low strain energy elements or shuffle around the mass within them. Um, as you will see, this uses an adaptivity um, methodology so that our, our mesh gets finer as our design is um, improved. So I go over to the studies and actually the only thing I need to enter is my target um, stress goal. So I'm going to set 200 megapascals. You remember it was 175 was what I had in the previous bracket. So I'm going to allow a little bit of slack on top of that. Then I have two other settings to make. Strut density um, varies between dense and sparse. So a, a sparse strut density says that what I'm looking for is fewer larger struts connecting areas of my, my part together, whereas the dense one says I want more sl slender, thinner struts connecting my part together. So I'm going to go for dense and then my shape quality really defines how many iterations and how refined the final solution is. So a preview will run really quickly. Uh, a fine tune will take about 70 iterations to go through and balanced is, is kind of a halfway house. I'm going to choose fine tune. So now you can see the little yellow man has lit up and I could hit that to run the analysis. I won't, I'm going, to, I'm going to do a blue Peter and pull up one I prepared earlier. The runtime on this will be about 20 minutes. So I'm going to open a recent one. So I want to go to Here, if I go into my study, I can go to post process. And this will import all the steps of the optimization. I can turn off contours. So you can see along the bottom here, it went through 70 iterations to uh, evolve this design. And I can actually play through them. You can see how, as it progresses, the mesh refinement increases, so I get finer and finer details towards the end. Uh, this means that my early iterations would have run very quickly and get slower and slower and slower as the mesh evolves. So looking at the final one, I can plot a fringe of stress. So you actually see here that my, my peak stress is, is about... Uh, 42 megapascals, so well underneath the target I set. Um, I can also look at mass. So the mass of the original bracket was, uh, was 1.75 kilograms. The mass here is, is shown in tons for, for consistent reasons, but you can see that my, my initial starting mass was, was 4.5 kilograms, and the optimization has taken me all the way down to um, 880 grams here. So I've saved... Um, almost half of the mass of the original design um, and if I look at the displacement I'm still 
I've actually got a lower displacement than the original design. So I have, I have evolved a design um, that is, is lighter, has lower stress and lower displacement than my original concept. So what I can do with this now is I can export it um, as, a, as a design candidate that I could take back into my CAD system um, or I could take that same file into Simufact Additive and start looking at the, um, the manufacturing process. So simulating the 3D printing to look at uh, distortion and residual stresses in the part. So that end-to-end -end process there is about half hour, 40 minutes to develop that design. Thank you very much.